I'm privileged to be here this evening. Thank you for attending and happy to talk to you about trust at work. When we think about trust at work, what I'd like to do is just level set around a definition of trust. And my favorite is from Charles Feltman, who says that trust means making something that is important to me vulnerable to the actions of someone else. Right, because trust is really about taking an action that you know is the right thing to do, but really not knowing and trusting that that other person is going to respond in kind. And so the idea is that we should extend trust first and then take the action that's in alignment with the person's action in response to us. Often we think that we want to, somebody to earn our trust or that we might have to earn someone's trust. But if we think about organizations and the rate and pace of change, we need to do the right thing, believing that we'll receive actions accordingly from other people. So if we think about trust in the world today, right, this just gives us a, a view of the kinds of things that we're thinking about, whether it's our government officials, whether it's this idea of fake news that's out there. If you're familiar with the Edelman Trust Barometer, for the first time in 20 years that they've been conducting this study around the world, the media is the institution that is at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to trust for the first time in the history of the Edelman Trust Barometer. And if you were to look at it at a country level, which government entity is at the lowest level of all the countries around the world, I don't know if we'd have to think too hard to imagine that it might be the United States. And the United States has the lowest, has the greatest decrease in trust ever seen in the history of the trust barometer this year. So there's just a tremendous amount of information and a focus and attention happening around trust in our present day environment. And it's a pivotal point and a time for us to reestablish what it means to trust, what trust looks like, how do we model trust within our organizations, how do we recognize and incentivize trust so that people begin to do the right thing, expecting that others will respond accordingly. Now, the good news is, is that we do have players out there in the workforce that are modeling what trust looks like. If you can think of the Fortune list of 100 best companies to work for, there, we don't have to look any further. Two thirds of the criteria that are used to identify the best companies to work for are grounded in trust. And what the research shows in the 20 years that we've been looking at those 100 best companies to work for, we see that the stock performance of those organizations that are a part of the 100 best companies, in fact, outpaces the standard measures of stock market performance by three times. And that's consistent year over year of the 20 years that we've measured those 100 best companies. Now here what you see is a model that we've put together for how is it that we accelerate trust. And we look at it from an, a lens of truth and trust and optimism. And this is based on some of the work that I did in my work at IBM. Consistently, year over year, looking at those parts of the organization that were most seeing the most highly engaged employees. And it was those places where we saw truth and trust and optimism. And how does that show up in the enterprise? That shows up in terms of the way we treat information. How is it that we, people have access to and transparency about the information that they're being presented with? And when they do have that access and there is that transparency, we see greater productivity. In terms of trust and relationships, we have high integrity relationships when there's high engagement in the organization. There's greater speed and agility when people don't have to wonder you know, whether or not they've got the support of their leader, whether or not they can trust the organization that they've got to interact with on a regular basis. Or actions happen much more rapidly. People can pivot much with much greater agility. And from an optimism perspective, right, it's all about a mindset. We've got an environment where it's, we understand we want to fail fast and that our leaders are going to support us in that so that we'll have the courage to take the risk the next time. And what we see is a greater opportunity for innovation. Now, what we'll go through next are some of the ways that technology is actually a huge part of accelerating trust in organizations and what's available to us now. 
So social collaboration is huge within organizations. And in fact, McKinsey did a social tools study where they heard from CEOs who said 93% of them said they're using social technology. Of those 93%, 80% of them said they're using social technology for internal purposes. So whether it's Slack that you're using in your organization, maybe it's Jive, maybe it's IBM Connections, maybe it's Facebook's workplace, but organizations are beginning to understand the power of people collaborating to get work done online in real time, no matter where they are in the world. And not only that, but there are actually many of these tools enabling polling capability so that we can tap into regularly the issues that are important and understand what employees think about particular topics or issues. Additionally, then, there are new technologies becoming available that says, OK, now that we've got all of this social information available in our platform, how is it that we can glean insight to that? How is it that we can take some of that qualitative data and understand what are the kinds of things here represented in green that are positive, right? What are the key themes that people are feeling great about? What about these items that are in red that are negative, that might need our attention and our areas of focus for improvement? Additionally, organizational network analysis. So the first area that we looked at was for access and, and transparency, social platforms. Now we're looking for speed and agility. And organizational network analysis is a space where we can actually use technology to advance this effort. With organizational network analysis, what we do is take data that might be represented in email, might be on a social platform, might be through instant messaging, but what we do is anonymize that information and then we get a sense of where is it that we have uh, key brokers of information and knowledge? Where is it that we might have bottlenecks within our information? Where is it that we might have areas where we've got people who are at risk for losing the an individual within the organization or groups of individuals within the organization. Again, what happens is this can be used where the information is anonymized and we can see broad patterns, or it can be where the information is all about people, but it's not about the content of the conversation that was in the email. It's more about just like frequency and, um, uh, and volume of information that's passing between people say, how is that important, or why might that be useful? Imagine a salesperson leaving an organization. If you, use social, if you use organizational network analysis, you can see who is it that they are interacting with outside of the organization, and begin to prioritize for that new salesperson coming in. These are the key accounts. Here's the frequency that people would be um, experimenting and, and working with those people. The last area is one of innovation. And it's using this optimistic, fail fast kind of an approach to collaborate online and have this real time online collaboration, allowing all employees in your enterprise to be a part of new ideas. I'll give you a quick insight to a 12-week effort to redesign performance management within IBM. Literally, who redesigns performance management in 12 weeks? But because we used an online approach, what we were able to do is um, invite employees, get their ideas about requirements, feedback the key themes, allow them to vote on it, put together an initial design, and launch it with the understanding that it would be an evolutionary approach, that it would change as we learned what was working and what wasn't working. So again, the focus here is to accelerate trust, and we do that using technology that's grounded in trust and truth and optimism. I encourage you to explore in your own mind how that's working within your own organization. Thank you.